Welcome to RVing in New England, the nation's only forum that puts you on stage with some of the biggest names in the RV industry. And now your hosts, John DiPietro and Bob Zagami. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I was going to keep you hidden there for a little while. Good evening, Mr. DePetro. Nagami, you take a week off, and um, you know what? i got to keep Bill Sale handy. Wait a minute. Didn't I work last week? Uh, no, you were uh, you were 35,000 feet. I was flying back to Florida. You That's were right. flying back to Florida. But we want to give a huge hello to our audience. Our most important aspects of this show is our audience. And... Um, you know what? We've got kind of a different show tonight. We've got a great show tonight. Why don't you t tell a little bit about who we've got coming up? Yeah, we've got uh, Carolyn Weston, uh, group director at Paragon Group for Lifestyle Shows, and she's responsible for putting together our Boston show. And she's going to talk about the show and answer questions from the fans. Uh, then we will have an interview with uh, Walt Burns from Easy Care. Good friend, has been on the show before. Uh, Easy Care stepped up to the plate this year and took out a major sponsorship sponsoring the seminars, seminars. Both the lifestyle track and the new technical track. So we're going to talk to Walt about the importance of education and the seminar program. And then watch this, folks. You, you haven't seen this before yet. Well, let's see. I'm excited I about wasn't, this. I wasn't asleep in this after the last hour, Mr. DePietro. Wow. We are going to have an exclusive DePetro interview with an R RV ears, actually, man and wife, trapped in Virginia snowstorm. And this will be seen only on RVing in New England. So only. This is a premiere. And this I do have to give my brother credit on this because he called me yesterday. Oh, you really have to. He called me yesterday and said, hey, there's RV or stuck in Virginia. I said, Michael, don't worry, because in Virginia, they put all that, that uh, pre-treating stuff down. And the snow never even hits the road. And then I put the TV on a little bit later and I saw those. It kind of looked like the blizzard of 78 pictures of Route 128 up here in New England. And um, you know what? This couple was stranded for 19 hours. And they're going to tell you their whole story. They're a great couple. Um, it's their first time RVing. It's the first time RV. I can't so, I can't wait to see this, but we certainly were not gonna cancel <laughs> Carolyn and, and and Walt. Uh yeah, but no. we're gonna focus on the show tonight. And uh I think most of our fans are really experienced people when it comes to RV shows, but if they're not, uh what's your one or two top hints for them, John? Come early, wear good shoes. And do some research beforehand because the website for the show kind of um, is a is a encyclopedia about what you're going to see at the show. And the other thing that I, you need to tell people about the show is this. Um, if you're going to the show the first time, expect to be confused. Don't expect to go in there and know exactly what you want because you're going to walk into the units at, at one end of the building and say, this is the one. Then you go to the next aisle and you say, no, this is the one, scratch off the other one. But there's so much to learn, but don't feel as though you have to learn everything at once because the great dealers that we have usually will have an open house at their facility the next week. So you know what? They can only bring X number of units to the show, but they've got many more in their dealership lots and um, don't necessarily feel as though you have to pull the trigger at the show, um, but learn enough to realize that um, it's a great lifestyle, as yep. our guest later will tell you. I would agree. And my number one tip would be to bring your camera. It's going to be your best friend. Yep. Take pictures ah. of every unit. That and one more thing. Bring a copy of your registration. And photos of your RV. If you're, yep. if you're trading in an RV, yep. exactly. bring, bring the title, bring your bank payoff figure, bring yep. photographs. How but much do you owe? But, you know, Bob, an, another thing that's very important that we should tell our audience is that we are very fortunate at New England RV Dealers Association to be working with the company that's putting on the show. Because you and I have been to shows all over the country, and some of them are put together like, remember that one? We were up in a certain state, 
that you couldn't walk from one unit to another mm-hmm. because they were jammed in so tightly. Yep. But this show is put together by professionals that do shows all over the country. And um, what better way to bring on our first guest? Yeah, let's bring on Carolyn. Hello. Kristen. Hello, Carolyn. Hi, John and Bob. Great to see you. Now, I, I know how hard this woman has been working the last <laughs> three or four months. So to, uh, to give us 10 or 15 minutes, number one, I really appreciate it. But number two, we wouldn't have a show if it wasn't for you. So we have to be nice to you. Oh, well, it's a great partnership. And, you know, it does feel like we've been uh, planning this one for two years, doesn't it? Oh, uh, God, yeah. uh, we should be nice anyway. <laughs> That's right. We should be nice anyway. And we should tell our audience that when they come into the show by the entrance, there's a there's a help desk over on the right. There's usually a couple ladies over there that are wrapped in swaddling clothes with ear muffs <laughs> and in gloves, depending upon what the weather is, right, Carolyn? Because every right. time I didn't realize today opens, I haven't done my outfit spreadsheet with you know all the different layers that I need to pack away exactly. for next week because it is it does get a little chilly in that lobby, but once you're in the uh, in the exhibit hall, it's pretty comfortable. Yeah, yeah, right, right. Well, well, we're, we're out there to welcome people to, to you know sort of give direction to both exhibitors, speakers, and um, attendees, and there's always someone around if you have any questions. Yeah, you know, speaking you, of exhibitors. You you run the lost and found desk, so when, you lose, right. your, when you lose your kids, you can go back up to the lobby and reclaim oh, yeah. them. <laughs> right. But, so, Bob, we should uh, notice that you talk about speakers and exhibitors. Um, we've got several of them that are here right now with us. Why don't you say yeah, hello to them? Well, well, we do. Uh, one second. I just want to mention one thing here, that you will be able to win two tickets to the show frequently during the show tonight. Haven't figured out how we're going to uh, award them, mm-hmm. but uh, you know, for the first set, um, for the first, I got to have to make notes because I'm not smart enough to remember this stuff. But so, folks, <laughs> while, while Bob's trying to figure that out, keep in no, mind we've been doing know, this I, show I, about I, seven I, years, so we know, should have a formula. Know, the twentieth, the twentieth comment. There you go. I'm gonna get two tickets. Okay. Then I'll figure out what. Yeah, but it's got to be a good comment, not just like. It's me. Right. You know, every time you do this with the comment thing, you say, person writes something, win me, win me, win me. I want to win. Don't worry about it. Then you um, figure out you figure out what the next one's going to be. So we right. got Michelle Fontaine early on tonight from Prescott Valley, Arizona. Arizona. So get out on the road. Again, have a fantastic show. Bernie Culloden is on. Bernie is one of our speakers. And mm-hmm. Bernie's going to have some fun stuff to tell you about the show. Uh, and this will be Bernie's first time appearing at the show. He's I can't wait to nervous. see Bernie's program. He has the intriguing title called uh, It Must Be True. I heard it on the internet. So hell I can't title. wait to hear what he's got to say about that. Hell of, hell of a title, Bernie. You really, you, you're creative. <laughs> Very intriguing. Oops. That, that's good. Right. Yeah. Walter's I think the fun. seminar um, program this year is the thing I'm, uh, besides the RVs, obviously, the, the thing that's um, most changed and most exciting about the show is that we really expanded that seminar program. Um, Walt Burns from Easy Care is going to be on a little bit later to um, talk about their sponsorship of that program, which we really appreciate. But um, it allowed us to sort of break it down into two um, tracks this year. So we really kind of matured the conference program. Um, one of the tracks is going to be like the lifestyle issues, things about choosing an RV and um, planning your first trip and camping, um, you know, a girl camper, uh, Janine Pettit is going to be with us and, and all these kind of, um, you know, topics that people are passionate about. But then the technical track, which is at a different stage, is going to be the nitty gritty. It's going to be the um, safety and security, the, you know, how to stay online when you're on the road and, um, you know, maintenance stuff. And it's really juicy, really juicy program. Yeah, it, it, it really is. And, you know, it's interesting because I've talked to other show promoters around mm-hmm. the country and many of them have gone in the other direction this year. Mm-hmm. They've actually canceled their seminar yep. programs. And mm-hmm. I was surprised to hear that we were expanding it. But it, it made all the sense in the world, as we've talked about for many, many months now, 50% of the new buyers are first-time buyers. And Correct. where are these people going to go for their education and their information? So mm-hmm. we've built the show up around that to attract a lot of new prospects into the show, a lot of new uh, prospects for our dealers. 
but more importantly, as a venue where they can come in and spend a day or more even attending the seminars and visiting with the dealers. And, and right. I would argue that they are equally important this year mm -hmm. in terms of the show because it's nice to buy them, but you got to know what to do with them. And we, right. And even if you, you're very experienced and, and you're, you're, um, you're not a first timer, a lot of times you're going to find out things that you didn't even realize about your unit or things that you could do or things that you could do easier or better or more fun, that kind of thing. So, um, you know, it's all about not just, um, you know, obtaining an RV, but uh, in, increasing your enjoyment of your time spent in the RV, spent on the road and camping in general. So, you know, that, you, that's what the seminar program's about. Let me, let me just show a couple of slides here. Sure. On the uh, on the technical end of it, we're bringing Mike Sokol back, and Mike is probably the number one guy in the country on RV electricity. And we got a tremendous pan another group of guys with them. You'll know most of them. Uh, Chris Doherty, probably one of the best national service technicians in the country, uh, a consultant and a writer and an author. In the middle, we got Randy Murray. He joins us a couple of times a year himself as the primary guest to talk about service items and things for consumers. And our new, uh, a new all-star, I like to, you know, he, he's the new guy on the team, but uh, mm -hmm. Ryan Hadley from TRIC, Mobile RV Repair and Service. So we've got the electricity panel, uh, electricity discussion. Then we've got a local guy, local service tech independent. We've got a dealer, you know, Randy representing the Pete's RV service centers. He's overall for the director of service. And then mm -hmm. Chris with all of his national experience. So that's on the technical side. And if you get into the lifestyle side, we, we are delighted to bring back Janine Pettit again. She's got two sessions this year. Uh, one is her factory to fabulous and that's being done over. That's not the same one she did last year. She's actually done all mm -hmm. the slides over. And she's got a new one, Selecting the Right RV for Girl Campers. Okay. And Hold on one second. Hold on one second. Folks, you see Janine's picture there. Mm -hmm. That other picture of the guy, that's the better looking side of him. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's my standing room only crowd. Mm -hmm. of my introduction to R RVs and the RV lifestyle. Uh, right. Let's I'll beat you to it, Bob. I'm sure you're going to ask me my tips for the show. And I would say that my first tip would be to sit in on one of your RV 101, um, you know, intro to RVing and the RV lifestyle programs. You deliver it several times each day. Um, it's different each time, but um, each time you focus on the things that are going to let people feel comfortable, um, you know, kind of talking their way through the show and, and realizing what questions they need to ask, kind of narrowing down their, their needs and objectives when they're at the show and, and for their purchase in general. And it's just a really great primer in, in, in um, what they can get out of the show and what they need to know when they walk out of the show. And, and I have as much fun as the audience does because they always yeah. ask great questions and we're able mm -hmm. to include other things for them. Let me jump back quickly to our comments. We got Walter in there. Dante's on from Maine. Kevin Hiroki. Kevin Horky is on from Keystone RV. Happy mm -hmm. New Year, guys. Looking forward to the Boston show next weekend. And there's a guy, one of the hardworking manufacturers, reps at the show, mm -hmm. which is another reason to come mm -hmm. to the show because – the dealers get busy. There's a lot of people in the booth. And when you go to the dealers and you like a particular product, ask the dealer if the manufacturer's rep from mm -hmm. that line. In, in the case of Kevin, when you're in Hemlock hey, Hill, hey, Bob. later Chris Andrew and the guys, I want to hey, talk Bob. to the manufacturer's rep because I hear he's really mm -hmm. a smart, a smart good-looking guy. And, and why, would you want to, why would you want to talk to Chris Andro when you can talk to Kevin, Kevin Hawkey? You, you, you can't over overstate how important it is the manufacturer's reps are. Here's the reason, and Bernie will tell you this. I mean, Bernie will be there. Is Bernie going to be there selling when he's not speaking? Yes, yes, he is. Okay. So if you go to the campers, campers in booth, campers in RV booth, you know, the guys will either be in orange or green or whatever it is, but they can't know everything about every product that they have mm -hmm. on their lot. But if you look for the Keystone person or if you look for the Winnebago person or if you look for the Forest River rep that work for the mothership out in Elkhart, 
they're going to know a lot more about that particular unit than possibly any sales rep. So don't feel as though you're um, putting them out of their way. I mean, they want to be talking. They want to be talking. Let's do our second giveaway. Mm -hmm. And we'll have to watch this the ticker board because they're gonna they're gonna get it quick. Kevin is nice enough to join us as often as he can given his busy travel schedule. The first person that can tell us which brand Kevin represents, which brand he represents, will get two tickets. And so we'll, we'll watch for that. So Kevin's there. Uh, Ryan is on. We just spoke about Ryan. He's on tonight. Jim Roy from Silver Moose Restorations in Maine. And I'll tell you, he keeps posting these pictures. He's got if if you know anybody that's a craftsman, I mean a real craftsman that wants to move to Maine, Jim will hire them tomorrow. He's got mm-hmm. work up, he's got at least a two-year backlog. Uh just amazed in the in the quality of his work is incredible. Uh, Jim Convoy from New England RV Roof is on. Here's another guy that's busy. You know, when you look at the way the marketplace is today, yep. uh, it's crazy. The people are saying, hey, I'm not going to trade in my my unit because maybe it's going to cost me too much. I have to pay list price now or a little bit on the list. Mm-hmm. They, they put a new roof on it. He's, he's ready to blow out the doors down there, and he's going to need another building, or he's going to have to expand. Yep. Lisa is on. Hello, Lisa. We get you some tickets from a couple of weeks ago. We've got them now. We'll get them out. Jerry Plant from Majors RV. Tim's uh, Tim's RV. Tim Christensen says, Ryan Hadley, glad to know you. John DePietro will be jealous. Oh, here we go again. Uh-oh. Going to get that battle. Lisa says, Bob, I can't go to the show, so perhaps you can give my tickets to someone else on tonight. I was looking forward to meeting many of you here on chat. Uh, I'll tell you what I'll do, Lisa. How about if I still send them to you, but to give them to your son or give them mm-hmm. to uh, somebody that you know yeah. or that your son knows that wants to come into the show. Hey, Carolyn, make yeah. sure you keep your eye on Zagami because he might be out in front of the building scalping tickets. I know. For a buck I know. less than the door price. Uh, always on Liberty, bloggers and journalists. Thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, glad to have you on the show. Maybe come back more often. Yeah, appreciate it. Greg Barsamian is on. Gail Hogan's on. That's our... Rhode Island State Director, her and her husband, Steve, for uh, Good Sam or whatever that association is the day. Mary Galanti Moore. But Tim- Gail has, Gail um, had an issue this week. She was at a food store and bought a can of SpaghettiOs. She actually bought that for you? Yep. I thought she was just holding it up just to make you feel good. No, she <laughs> is, she sent it to me. She sent it express she mail. Sent it, to you. it was 88 cents for the can and... Mm-hmm. She paid $12 to overnight it to me. So, Gail, we had it tonight. It was great. I hope you don't eat that one, DePedro. That one, you know, you could have a nice Chef Boyardee wall right, right behind your left shoulder. You could put shelves right. up there. You're and right. then you could put celebrity Chef Boyardee cans. So you can say this one came from Gail. This one came from Lisa. Yeah. This one came from Carolyn. And you could have your own little museum. But Gail's other claim to fame is she is one of the top fans of my morning show called Mornings with George. Yeah. And Gail is always there. No matter where she is, she watches Mornings with George. Nice. It'll be on tomorrow at about, um, about quarter nine tomorrow. Morning well, with George. I think you ought to have George sign one of his 8 by 10 gl- He must be into the photographs now. And, and George you know, is in that picture back there. And, and fans, <laughs> you know, he's got his own fans. He'll do his own. Uh, he's around here somewhere. Him. He's coming to the show. He's got his own booth. All right, Tim cool. says, show show input. Have someone explain 12 volt DC versus 110. Uh, Mike Sokol. Yeah. In on Mike Sokol's. In fact, Tim, you. You should come in just for Mike Sokol's because you're really good at that stuff. Also, you would if you haven't seen Mike in person, he's incredible. Uh, Mr. Swenson, hit the. Uh, you know what? You you're going to get two Swenson, and I know. I got to put Swenson down here. All did right? he just win the thing about where Kevin no, was from? No, he didn't. I am going to put his thing up there. Where, oh, didn't I do it? Walter mm-hmm. Swenson says, "I assume there will be COVID requirements." See, we, we deliberately waited, and I said, I'm, I'm going to give two tickets to the first person that brings it up because we are <laughs> well, 
We are well prepared to discuss it. And if you thought we were going to go a whole hour without talking about the requirements for COVID, uh, you're wrong. So sure. Carolyn, take it away. Sure. Um, the city of Boston has had an indoor mask mandate for um, several months now. So that's still in play. Everyone will have to wear a mask when they're at the show um, in when they're indoors at the BCEC. In addition, the city is starting a new uh, rule starting on the Saturday of the show. The show begins on Friday from 4 to 8. So this won't be in play on Friday, but on okay. Saturday morning, starting at 9 o'clock, anyone who walks in the building, exhibitors, speakers, staff, and attendees will need to show proof of one vaccination shot. It's the city's policy, and we're going to uphold it. It'll be a very smooth process. You do need to have um, either a CDC card or other official vaccination record. It can be a physical record. It can be a picture of one on your phone. You may be asked to match an ID with it. And um, I think they have a system down that's going to go very smoothly. So th those are the regulations in place. And then we have asked exhibitors to um, you know, be sensible about how many people are in each unit at a time to, you know, regularly wipe down the high touch areas, that kind of thing. And then the building is a great partner in, in health and safety. They'll have lots of um, hand sanitizer stations around. Obviously, there's plenty of restrooms if you'd like to wash your hands. Um, you know, we ask that people don't come to the show if they're having any sort of symptoms like a fever. Um, and in general, you know, we're going to try and keep things nicely spaced out and just, um, you know, I think that people are going to be very comfortable at the show. The, the One of the things that's really incredible about the building is that it was used as a field hospital last winter. Um, and when they did that, they installed an incredible air circulation system that that's, you know, considered top of the line for convention center centers in this country. It actually recirculates the air, um, the complete air in the complete building eight times an hour. So um, it, it's like practically like being outdoors. So, you know, everyone should feel comfortable that they're, um, you know, safe and protected when they're at the show. Yep. And, and one other thing we posted Carolyn posted earlier this week, or late last week, a video mm -hmm. about buying the tickets online. Yeah. And we, we, we are very excited about the show, sincerely, because that video has already been viewed over 50,000 times. Mm -hmm. It's been shared 324 times. Mm -hmm. And we only had, quite honestly, about 10 or 12 nasty comments. Mm -hmm. People that commented on the color of the street lights or, or something else. So mm -hmm. the attitude of the people is fantastic. They're ready for the in-person show and, and we are ready to have them. Um, Gail Hogan, we will be attending the RV show in Jacksonville this weekend. Mm -hmm. Won't yep. be as much fun, Gail. <laughs> Why would you want to be out in 70, 80 degree weather when you can be indoors? I know, terrible, isn't it? Uh, Swenson says, going to head over to Tampa in about two weeks. I will be at the Tampa show on Wednesday and Thursday, Walter. I'm flying back uh, right after our show, but I'll, I'll be there. So we'll hook up and have a cup of coffee. Lisa, really disappointed I can't go. Sounds like awesome information. Well, we're disappointed that you will not be there. Mm. Uh, Maria is going to be at Tampa. Tim says, good. May include why an air conditioner runs 110, not 12 volt. Ryan says he covers that stuff in his uh, sessions mm -hmm. as well. Uh, on the technical side. Uh, I'm looking forward to Ryan's program. Ryan is a, a mobile repair and, and service uh, guy. So I'm thinking Ryan's seen it all. Well, he Ryan, Ryan's, a, Ryan's, a, Ryan's a rock star. He's, he's yeah. up and coming, but his customers love him. He's got a wonderful family, four children, and Amy. Mm -hmm. uh, we just love working with them. And, Great. and, he, and you know, some people might say, wow, why well, you always mention Ryan? Because Ryan was smart enough to join Nerve, to, that's why. Mm -hmm. So if you're, an, if you're an independent rep out there, and you want to get some additional exposure with our thousands of fans and you know the people that follow Nerve, to, then join Nerve. To. It's real yeah. simple. Yeah. Um, Tim says Chris RV. I'm not sure what that means. And Bernie Colleton says Cougar. Well. Bernie, you're excluded because you're in the industry. So I don't right, break, exactly. I don't want to break your heart, but I'm not giving you two tickets. <laughs> so, Greg, you're wrong. It is not Forest River. 
Uh, and I don't see anybody else above that. Okay, so there's two tickets hanging out there, folks. The first, even though I said it when I was talking about. Oh, they, they made it earlier. It, yeah, but see, when you when you talk, they don't listen to you. When I That's talk, true. they listen to me. So That's obviously, true. they didn't hear you. That's and true. I'm not going to say right. it. So right. do that. No, Frank Cates is the one last night. Uh, Lisa says, okay, Bob, I'll see if someone I know can use them. Dante, how far is the train station down Easter right. from the convention? Well, Mr. DePietro, as some of you may not know, is a resident train expert. So I'm going to have well, him. Well, Dante, mm -hmm. um, I, and I don't want to step on Bernie because Bernie said it's only um, a couple miles away. Bernie, if you're coming in and down Easter, you're at North Station. Mm -hmm. So right. just jump in an Uber either way. You're at North Station and just come on over. And, um, you know, uh, uh, yeah, you don't want to walk, Bernie. If you travel with anybody, excuse me, not Bernie, um, Dante, they have buy one, get one free tickets um, for people on that train on the weekends. So, you know, instead of paying 20 bucks for one person, you pay 20 bucks for two. Yeah. And I think you take, there, there is some public transportation that goes over there, but Uber right. or uh, that the other public transportation usually takes you just to South Station. So once you get to North Station, you ought to take an Uber and go directly right. to the exhibition center. Or you can take, take the blue line, line, one stop, you know, which is the MBTI blue line, oh, one stop to the um, from South Station to the BC yep. stop. Um, okay, Cherry, Cherry Apple, Cherry and Roof Crop. Well, thank you very much for joining us, Terry. That's Krupp uh, Park Model Homes, which I just happen to be one of their customers. Our mm. park model up in Maine is a Krupp. We love it. Uh, it's a fantastic company. If you're thinking about destination camping, check All out. Right. Mm -hmm. Yep. Bernie says, I think it's only two. No, I'll forget that. Mark Polk, a bit late, but good evening. 724. Mark, the second part of being late is you're supposed to apologize to our fans for coming into the show late. So we'll, we'll let you take care of that. Uh, thanks, Bernie. Welcome, Mark. Tony Barthel. Tony, who writes RV Reviews, in one of the okay. daily newspapers, and uh, does a lot of stuff on the internet. Uh, he has Stressless Camping website. You may have seen that. Uh, the people looking for RV shows on the Stressless Camping website is off the freaking charts this year. I, yeah, I you think missed the same charts. Validated what I said earlier, Tony. I think you're right. People, you know, everybody wants to talk about the show. Uh, mm -hmm. Everybody's excited about the show, uh, including the dealers. The, the dealers are happy to be back and, and having an in-person show. Uh, Cherry Apple says, Keystone, you are close, Terry, but you're also in the business, so I'm not going to give you the tickets either, unless you're going to come to Washington. <laughs> Um, wait, wait, what's wrong with Keystone? Hmm? What's no, wrong with Keystone? the brand, not the manufacturer, the brand, the yeah. particular brand. Oh. And manufacturer's reps sometimes only have one or two lines. And see, he, he only has the Cougar line because the Cougars are so incredibly popular and his hmm. dealers sell so many, he doesn't need to carry two or three mm -hmm. bands. Yep. brands in his briefcase. You're right. And he's, he's a good guy. He always buys us lunch. Well, he is a nice guy. <laughs> he buys us lunch. There's that bigger Bob facing crowd. I recognize the man in the front row. How old is that pick? It's probably I Frank. Know. I don't know. I've been using it for years, Frank. But is that you in the front row? Don says, apologies. Late again. Hello from Athens, Texas. See, Mark, there's a good example of what you do when you come in late. Mm -hmm. Ryan says, Thor, you are wrong, Ryan. You're in the business. So would a consumer, a, an RVer, if they can find out what Kevin Horky, what brand he represents to our dealers, you can have two tickets. Okay, uh, Zagami, it's 7.30. No, we got yeah, to bring, we, we bring we our next guest with on. Carolyn, Carolyn any, any closing comments before we bring our friend Mr. Burns up? Um, not yet. We're, we're just really excited to see everybody. Uh, definitely recommend online ticketing um, as the way to go. And um, everything that John said about good shoes and, you know, looking ahead at the website is very much correct. And we just can't wait to see everybody. So uh, keep an eye on the Facebook page. We'll be feeding you more information as we get even closer to the show. And um, I'm headed out to parking lot to start corralling some RVs into the the BCC. 
Okay, and while you're still on, we should say this. Buy your tickets online. before. Mm -hmm. Don't wait in the lines, because there will be lines. Buy them online. Go to the bostonrbexpo.com website, and I've got the picture there. You can look down the bottom left. It tells you to buy tickets. On the, the right-hand side, it tells you to buy tickets. Use the code NERV to want to ask you for a code, and you will get the NERV to $2 discount. Yep. Right, Carol? Oh, yeah. One more thing. I'd like to mention Military Monday. Oh, yes. Um, the tickets for um, veterans and active uh, duty military are free on Monday. It's just for the um, the actual uh, veteran or, or um, active duty person, not the whole family. But um, we are doing that, you know, courtesy of VA Healthcare, who's a great partner in this event. And you do uh, want to bring some ID with you that can be a VA card, any other veterans organization you belong to, or, you know, military ID, you know, your license that says that you serve that kind of thing, just something semi official. Um, your camouflage Pat's hat does not make you a veteran. <laughs> <laughs> um, just kidding. But, you know, you just need something that shows you that you've served, that kind of thing. And then you will just be scot free to come on into the show and, and enjoy the day. So we hope a lot of people take advantage of that. But they don't have to come in full military gear with a right. parachute on their back or anything. Right. 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 Not required. Okay. Right, Thank you so much for having me, guys. Thank you. We're going to Always do nice quick. to have you, Carolyn. We'll be seeing much, much more of you this yes, time. Yeah. We're going to do a quick show Next commercial, week. and then we're going to bring up... The Boston Harry. RV and Camping Expo is back January 14th through 17th at the Boston Convention Center. Three football fields of RVs from New England's top dealers. With inventory tight, it's your chance to see the latest models and get your order in now. Tickets at bostonrvexpo.com. The Boston RV and Camping Expo is back January 14th through 17th at the Boston Convention Center. Three football fields of RVs from New England's top dealers. With inventory tight, it's your chance to see the latest models and get your order in now. Tickets at bostonrvexpo.com. See, that's that's how you make a 15-second commercial a 30-second commercial. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks, Carolyn. Mr. Burns, waiting in the wings. How are you, sir? Hey guys, great to be here. Well, it's great. It's great to have you. And uh, on behalf of Carolyn and the folks at Paragon Group and Nervdo, we want to thank you very much for really stepping up to the plate and and you know wanting to sponsor the seminar program, uh, both from a lifestyle and technical standpoint. Why don't you tell folks a little bit who you are? They may not know you, and then why the seminar program in particular, rather than a full page you had. Wait, 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 wait. You can't get two questions in at once. You say, tell us a little about that. And I'll say, well, tell us about Easy Care. Okay, go ahead. We're good now. <laughs> First of all, you guys are absolutely the best. And we're really excited about supporting Carolyn and Paragon uh, for the Boston Camping Show. Um, this is the first time we've done this uh, as an organization. We're um, passionately committed uh, to really providing as much educational content to um, all of these fantastic people that now are joining our industry, purchasing recreational vehicles, whether it's first time buyers or, or seasoned campers, but being supporting the, uh, the camping uh, expo, um, supporting the fantastic dealers that you've got participating guys um, is really exciting. Um, so we're, we're excited to participate. My partner, Ken Rudolph and I will be there. Um, and we're really just excited to be part of the show. You got good shoes, Walt? I learned. I listened just a little bit earlier. I'm all okay. set, guys. <laughs> okay. Are, are you in a hotel room, Walt? I'm in a condo, actually. In Florida? So, uh, Wilmington, North Carolina. Oh, that's where... Hey, you're right by Mark Polk. Exactly right at the end right. of I-40, right? It is. You're right on it, buddy. Yep. Yeah, right. yeah we got to get you We got to get you over to Harold's, North Carolina, and uh, you got to have a cup of coffee with the Polks because... They've got tremendous experience in the business, all from an educational standpoint. Also, that. We'll, we'll, and they're nice people. They, and yeah. they're nice people. Un, un, unlike John and I, they they're on the <laughs> other side of the equation. They are the nice people, right? Yeah. So, you well, know, Su Susan Carpenter is saying hello to you. Oh, oh super! Yeah, right. I mean, really, the show and the lineup, guys. Um, you know, for us to be able to be part of it, sponsoring it, it's it's just a smart investment for us. I mean, we're so passionate about not only our membership and support of the New England RV Dealer Association, but the dealers and their customers. I mean, New England's a big deal. Um, there are great people up there. And 
the technical and the lifestyle tracks, the way that Carolyn and you guys have laid this out, I really think it's going to be a fantastic educational environment for everybody to understand more about both sides of the, of the uh, tracks. Right. Well, you know, Walter, tell us what Easy Care is, because the name itself, it could be really anything to do with RVing. It is. And, and thanks, John. Well, since 1984, we've been really very fortunate to be working with, it, up till today now, hundreds of recreational vehicle dealers throughout the United States and some fantastic dealers in New England um, and providing them a, a variety of valued uh, ad benefits um, from a training and development standpoint. But even more importantly for them is dealers uh, know that they've got to take care of their customers. That's, that's the bottom line so they can keep their them customers for a lifetime. And we provide the products and services. Uh, for an example, when the factory warranty expires on a new vehicle, it's critical um, for the dealers to be competent and a provider like Easy Care to provide that extended warranty that really provides that carefree ownership experience for customers um, and providing you know, really valuable benefits like a technical assistance hotline, emergency roadside assistance and towing. So um, we really are passionate about making sure we take care of our dealers, customers when they're traveling anywhere in the United States or Canada. So we've been doing that um, for quite a long time now, and we're really passionate about making sure that we help our dealers, again, enjoy, ensure their customers have a fantastic ownership experience. You know, exactly. you, you bring up a good point about taking care of the dealer's customers, because you sell to the dealers. And one of the things that people probably don't realize is how how you're trying to change or how you got your company to change the view because you sell directly to dealers, your business to business. Correct. But you were able to convince them that, Hey, if we tell customers what is available, whether it's, your, whether it's an easy care product or another product, because Ken's, Ken's going to do a session, a seminar, explaining to people all the products that are sold in the F&I office afterwards, but it's not going to be about easy care. It's going to be, why is this product important to a consumer? Why should you have this coverage? Why should you do that in consumer terms? So you've taken to the street to, in support of the deal, is to say, here's some educational material for you, and you should talk to your dealer about it but in a non-sales environment. And, and I think it's a very unique approach because a lot of people in this industry just come right at you with the sales approach. But, you know, kudos to your senior management team that said, you know, this makes a lot of sense, Walt. So we're going to try it out in New England. So if you screw it up with the guys in New England, we're never going to do it again. Hey, you remember I told you guys way back when that my family's from the North Shore of Boston. So I, I know how tough it can get sometimes. <laughs> But right, Bob, you're, you're spot on. I mean, the educational content, you know, really what motivates us and inspires us in a, as an organization is to ensure that ultimately the customers, their friends and their families are having the best experience possible. You know, hopefully we'll have doors open up and opportunities develop and that's all well and good, but really providing that educational content, providing maybe some key questions that a consumer should ask when they're looking at a true extended service contract that's gonna be the right fit for their budget and for their ownership experience, there are some key pieces of it that you want to ask, and we're, we're just happy to provide that content. Yeah. Before you jump too far, let me again remind our viewers, after Walt's interview, we have the exclusive John DePietro interview with RBAs who are trapped in the Virginia snowstorm. This will be seen only on our being in New England, and it is uh, something that we're probably going to use on our Camper Report show uh, later on this week when we tape that. But uh, that's going to be an interesting... Another, Amazing. This, this, Brought to you by Easy Care RV. That, 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 would, that, would, that would have been a challenge. You just gave them more commercial value. Yeah. But imagine, I mean, did you, did you get full? I mean, that... Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I don't even put you on the spot, but you, know, you got customers. You probably had customers stuck in that snowstorm. And we've got, and I've got friends and family in Virginia. That was one of the states that got just pounded. That might be 95 in Virginia. I don't know where, but uh, yeah, we've got dealers and customers that were there stranded on the sideline. You know, we, yes, we got there as quickly as possible and as safely as possible, but the emergency roadside assistance, the mobile mechanic dispatch, uh, we were on fire the last couple of days. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what? That's important because 
Um, luckily, the guests that we had had plenty of fuel, plenty of propane. Right. They had a full tank of their diesel. Um, but our guy had a uh, brand new Winnebago toy hauler. He got up on top of the roof and took, took some panoramic pictures. There was one RV that was two units behind him. Those people just took their slide out. On Interstate 95, they just put the slide out and <laughs> spent the night. Wow. So that's taken a chance. Now, now if, if he had, did he was he creative enough to turn his RV into a food truck and uh, open up the door and throw some hamburgers on the grill? Or here, here's what he did is because nobody knew at night what the deal was, and they said people weren't that outgoing and going to you know going from place to place. But they said in the morning, um, he and the kids and his wife went car to car giving out energy bars and and water. Wow! So they were very nice. Awesome. Yep. Interesting. All right. Well, we look forward to having you, Walt, and uh, having Ken, and having Ken with us. It's going to be uh, it's going to be a great show. Uh, any? Let me see if there's any additional comments here for you. They're coming in. Thor, Susan Carpenter. Thanks for joining us tonight, Susan. Michelle, wait. How do you handle all the things on the roof? How do you handle all the things on the roof when you? I think she's talking floor? about. Um, and Jim what is Conboy? Well, what I think she's talking to Jim Conboy. Oh, okay. That that may that may be. Yeah, yeah. Because we're not we're not going to do a sales pitch for uh, Easy Care. Bernie yeah. says fantastic. So I assume that that's it. And nobody's gotten Kevin. Uh, Kevin, you're going to have to step up your game, Kevin. I I thought you were a household. Uh, Household. Get, we, Dante we, says he wants to hear more about Walt's company during the show. And um, you know what? Yep. But but here's one thing that's I think it's important. There are sponsors that become sponsors so that they can do sales pitches. Walt's not doing that. No, that's very important. They, They'll tell about the company, but they're not gonna they're not gonna lure you in there for an hour and give you a sales pitch. Absolutely not. Yep. Uh, right. Uh, Nothing uh, turns people off more than that. Yep. And of all of our associate members, the one who uses that slot or that opportunity the best is Easy Care. He yep. works with us. He works with our customers. He works with our dealers. Second best and coming up quickly behind you is, is Ryan Hadley. He, he was a smart, independent mobile rep who joined Nervedu, thanks to John DePietro, who found him. Or he found John, one of the well, other. I him at uh, Las Vegas, didn't I? Yes, you did. You met Ryan in Las Real Vegas. Real nice. Yep, yep. Yeah, we're we're going to get him, you know, so we're going to get him into the uh, seminar program here, get him a little polished, and we'll they'll take him out on the national circuit with us. In fact, you know, I was thinking of it, John. I'm so popular on my seminars. Maybe I could use Ryan as my opening act. He could kind of like be my Ed McMahon. <laughs> well, Ryan, Ryan's not old enough to realize who Ed, who Ed McMahon is. is. Right. <laughs> yeah. There's Johnny. Exactly <laughs> right. Exactly right. Ryan, Ryan says, hi, Walt. Don Patterson says, same as the blizzard of 78 in New England. Yeah, yeah. you're right. I, I, I remember that one. I just made it home on that one. I lived on the top of a very high hill in Arlington, Mass., and I literally... I, I don't think I could have gone another five minutes in my Arlington, time. Mass. But my wife and I both made it home. She was, oh, she was about eight months pregnant when that hit, and and one of our, you know, we we loved it. We you know, we didn't have to go anywhere. Nobody was working. None of the customers were calling. It was it was like a week's vacation in the snow. But one of my neighbors was so rude that she wanted to get out and see her friends and go to the supermarket and what have you. My neighbor calls the Department of Public Works and says, you've got to plow this street. The woman next door is pregnant and she's going to have a baby any time. And, and all of a sudden the plows come down the street. Wow. And, and my wife never asked for it. She was eight months pregnant. She wasn't anywhere near having it. But that's how our street got called because somebody was so selfish that they didn't want to wait their turn. <laughs> Ryan, I know who that is, Bob. I don't want to ruin your show. Uh, you mean you know who Kevin represents? 
Arlington, yeah. Mass, where I used to live, says Don. We lived on top of Arlington Heights, up by the tower at the top of the hill, Don. Uh, okay. Gula, the Heights, yeah? Yeah, right. All right. Well, we're going to uh, switch into, yeah, just about 746. So I'm going to ask you, perfect timing. we're going to run over a couple of minutes, but I think you're going to like the video enough. Well, I have to give, give credit to my brother who uh, set this up for me. Yep. Well, thank brother. you for joining us. We will see you next week in Boston. We look forward to a great show. Thanks, but John. stay for um, this. This is worth it. I'm sticking around. Yeah. Okay. So, oh, Carol's still there. yeah, Carol's working. All right. So, John, you want to give a little introduction while I find the video? Yeah. I mean, um, earlier this week, I got a call from my brother. What's today? Wednesday on Monday and saying, hey, there's this big snowstorm down in Virginia. And um, you ought to look for, I saw RVers in the, um, in the aerial footage. So I said, hey, let's find out. So I went online today, asked a RV group if they knew of anybody. And they said, yeah, I know this guy from Pennsylvania. I was able to look up his profile and uh, they got to us right away. They're the nicest couple. They are um, Ricky and Danielle Mayer from just north, about uh, 50 miles north of Pennsylvania. So um, talk, with that being talk, said, they had uh, two kids. Uh, I screwed up something here. I had it. I don't know where it is. So I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. Walt, if, if Walt, if you still there, yeah. To talk to John for a couple minutes. I got to run back out and get the video. I don't know. I'm excited about the show, though. Really, um, the dealers that you've got there, the the brands, the names, the, the breakouts. I'm hoping is one of the most successful shows you'll have. Well, you know what? Look at there's there's anticipation because you know last year's show wasn't there, and. Exactly. The crazy thing is there are more new people coming into the industry than ever before. And you can either blame COVID or thank COVID. But at the same time, when some industries were devastated, um, the RV industry was one of the major beneficiaries of it. And not just the selling of the RVs, but the servicing of the RVs and the, uh, the camping, the campgrounds, the KOAs, the... Um, Exactly. Uh, the RV rental companies and everything such as that. So, um, so the, 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 the dealers, the experience that just happened this year, well, it's a record all time ever. Um, and, right. and the exciting thing about it is 2022, based off of everything RVDA and RVI are forecasting, um, we're going to have one heck of an exciting year in 20 of uh, this year, 2022. Yep. Yep, exactly. So, well, this is what's known in broadcasting as stretching it. Well, you, know, <laughs> you, know, you know what? Unfortunately, we were so quick to try to get this on. The video is too long. 10 minutes is the maximum length. Uh, so I cannot, because it's 15 minutes, I cannot bring it on and we don't have time to shorten it. Can you uh, put it on and let it play the first 10 minutes? That's, I thought I had, because I had it up there for a minute, then they they must have caught it. Uh, the share button at the bottom of the page lets you share videos of any size and length in this section. Okay. Okay, hang on a second. I think you got it. I think I got it. Boom, boom, boom. Hang on, come down here. This is where we play the music. Da, 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 da. So, Walt, tell us, tell us what you know about the RV industry. How long you've been around it? Uh, where you're oh, from, man. and uh, and you're a little bit about your background. Uh, well, um, 20 years at Easy Care, and um, at least half of that uh, dedicated to RV, and it's been an amazing experience. Uh, dealers throughout the United States, um, just getting to know really the nuances of it, the uh, unique aspects of it as when a customer is actually purchasing a recreational vehicle, the, the terms, the financing that's available. Um, what, what's really been a revelation, John, has been, you know, that really the short duration of the factory warranties. I mean, the, the factories have got a lot of components in the recreational vehicles are getting fancier and fancier every day. But when, when you, let's say we have a customer that finances uh, their recreational vehicle for 12 years or 144 months, but 
I've, I've actually only got one or maybe two years of factory warranty. There's yeah. just a lot of exposure there. Yeah. And, and when you talk about looking at per, you know, purchasing an extended service contract and other benefits that we offer, and of course, there's other great companies as well. It really just makes all the sense in the world because it's, we're talking just about a few bucks a month and you've protection. got all this peace, and, peace of mind and, and protection. So it's been just yep. a blast. Yep. Yeah, exactly right. And um, what it all boils down to is sometimes it's that insignificant thing that costs a lot to repair because you have to go through some significant things to find the insignificant thing. Yeah, agreed. And, I mean, uh, you know, and, and even the, the, the mobile technicians out, out in our industry, you know, folks who are at campgrounds, campsites, and, you know, having a tech, basically a technician come out and take care of all of what's going on, diagnose what's going on. Um, we just work with literally thousands of them in the United States. And it's, it's just a win-win for the customer. Again, you know, the customer just make a phone call, get it handled. Um, and hopefully they're back all set. So it's been a blast. Yep. Yep. So Frank Hate says went on Reserve America and everybody knows that so many of the public sites are reserved there and says it looks like some are not opening Salisbury Beach. You know, Frank, I don't know what that particular situation is, but um, maybe you can go to their own website and see what the story is. They might be doing some extensive repair work or there's something going on with the seashore that's not allowed, not allowing mm -hmm. them to do it. So um, now Ryan, okay. Now Ryan, uh, Ryan doesn't sell RVs and um, he doesn't sell product. You know, he doesn't sell warranties, but he said, I've seen firsthand of having the extended warranty come in very handy financially. And uh, he says oh, it's yeah. worth it. And again, Ryan doesn't work for a dealership and Ryan doesn't sell those. So if he has the, um, the background and experience to let you know that mm -hmm. it might be something that you do want to take a look at. John, I mean, let, listen. This oh, meeting is being recorded. Here we go. Hey, everybody. It's John DePietro. And you'd have to be under a rock somewhere in um, another hemisphere if you weren't aware of the news that took place just a couple days ago. In fact, it's probably just hap still happening right now where there was a crazy snowstorm in Virginia, southern part of Virginia. And um, there were people, thousands and thousands of people, trailer trucks, cars, and the pertinence to us is RVs that were stuck on I-95 for between 19 and 24 hours. And we here at RVing in New England always think that there's going to be somebody from New England that's traversing I-95 because it's the only way to get from New England to Florida uh, or point south. And what we did was we scoured the United States and we found a couple from nearby Pennsylvania that spent 19 to 24 hours, depending upon who you talk to, stuck in that here. I'm going to duck down here for a second so you can <laughs> see what they were stuck in. Okay. And we want to welcome them. We want to welcome Ricky and Danielle. And both of your last name is Meyer. Mayor, yeah. Okay, I always ask that question. Can't can't assume anything anymore. But tell us, tell us what it was like. Um, first of all, tell us where you're from in Pennsylvania and where you were coming from from Point South. And we presume you were down there for the was it the Christmas and New Year's break? Uh, yeah, so uh, I'll take this one. Uh, we went down to, we actually went to North Carolina, um, and then we traveled from North Carolina. We were there for two days, and then from there, we actually went down to Jacksonville, Florida, where my uncle lives. Um, so we wanted to go there to visit him, let the kids swim in pools, 85-degree weather, even got to go on the beach. Um, it was beautiful. It was perfect. It was everything that you wanted on a vacation. Um and we spent New Year's there and we sent an extra day and was like, we're gonna give ourselves two days to get home from Jacksonville to, uh, we live in Green Lane, Pennsylvania. And we thought that would be enough and it was not. It was, um, not. It was not, it was not. So we started traveling home and we just kept hitting bumps every, every turn, literally every turn we had. Yeah. Um, it started out with one thing and then it was another. So um, he's better at telling the things that happened in the camper and the RV, but um, it was not smooth sailing to get home. That's for sure. And all I kept saying was, 
Florida was 85 degrees. Let's go back. <laughs> okay. So let's put it this way. It was a lot smoother sailing in an RV than if you just had the truck or were yeah. in your family car. And uh, yeah. am I right with that? Yeah, thank God we did. Yep. And Ricky, you'd, you mentioned me today that you guys are new to RVing. Was this your first long distance trip? Uh, it's actually our second. So we did the entire Northeast up to Maine and back. Okay. This summer. The summer. Yeah. Then, yeah. Yeah. We, we did a couple of short trips here and there, but, but we just decided on a whim with the, the year that we had, we wanted to get away and get away from the cold and this and that. So we decided to go down to Florida right after Christmas. So, so you kind of, um, you've driven it before, so you know, you know, you can get 50 miles an hour in or, or whatever it is. So you kind of had it geared that you didn't have to be crazy to drive back. I mean, you just, you, you had enough time planned, right? But yeah, uh, I've, you know, I've been driving a, my parents had a travel trailer growing up. So okay. I learned to drive that at a pretty young age. Um, so I'm not necessarily that new to it, but it's our first camper, our first go around with it as a family. So, okay. So you're, you're, through South Carolina, you're through North Carolina, you're halfway through Virginia, you're north of Richmond, and you figure <laughs> clear sailing, right? Yeah, well, we knew we were going to hit uh, some crazy rain and, and wind and stuff leaving Jacksonville, but in South Carolina, actually, right as soon as we started hitting a little rain, uh, we needed fuel for the truck, and I was going to get off at the next exit, and here we got a flat tire. We had a flat tire. Oh. Um, right on 95 and somebody was nice enough to pull up and, and tell us that so we got off and it was an exit where there was nowhere to go nowhere to pull off or turn around uh, we ended up going through some backcountry road with a bunch of logging roads off of it and finally found a big church to pull over at to change a tire so the, the tire was on the trailer or in the truck on the trailer, so it was low, but not completely flat. And uh, we, like I said, we pulled over at a church that didn't even have a paved parking lot. So I pulled onto their basketball court just to get out of the sand that was in the area. And luckily enough, it was under the awning. I put the awning out to change the tire. So we didn't get soaked when it did start downpouring. <laughs> it, so right would, rear. <laughs> it took the wind out of our sails. Uh, as far as that night went, we, we finally went and got fuel and got dinner and yeah, it was. Okay. So we should say that you were also traveling with a six-year-old and a four-year-old. Is that, that, that got the ages yeah. right? Okay. Yeah. They're oblivious to what's going on, right? I mean, they got their, maybe they have their devices or of course they're sitting in the back of the truck with you. They're not in the back of the trailer. Right. Yeah. Um, they were on the Harry Potter marathon at the time. So, <laughs> okay. So goodness for Harry. Thank goodness for Harry marathon, Harry marathon, Harry Potter. So now you're back on the road again. And, um, to, where did the, where did it start getting dicey slash icy? Probably coming into Virginia. It was, it was definitely snowing and I was keeping an eye on the temperatures as they were going down. And finally, I was saying to her, it's, you know, it's 32 degrees. And she said, stop reminding me. <laughs> and I'm like, look, I'm just, I'm talking about for driving purposes. You right. know, it's 32 degrees. Stuff's right. going to start freezing on the road Absolutely. and and this and that. And then um, we actually pulled off. Uh, I wanted to get off of 95 and take a detour because um, I knew there were already shutdowns ahead of us. So we wanted to get off 95. We tried to take a detour, ended up on some other backcountry roads with our trailer that is 37 feet long. Oh, uh, and, yeah, and, and pretty <laughs> tall. And we, so we got off on some backcountry roads that were already snow covered and ice. The trees were coming in on the sides. Uh, luckily, we had a good Samaritan help us out with the chainsaw to, to get back on the highway. <laughs> oh, to get back on the highway. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. we could get stuck worse there. there. Yeah. yeah, so it started detouring us, and it actually took us a certain way, and where it was taking us, there were signs for bridges that only you can only cross if you had we were 4,000 tons. Well, we're over that, and we knew that, so we told them, we're like, we can't go this way, and they kept saying to us, go this way right before the bridge, you can make a right-hand turn. Well, 
we got there, we go to make the right. And there's just this big tree in front of us. And we're like, whoa, we can't, we turned and we had nowhere to go. I looked at him, what can I do to help? He goes, go, go to cut down that tree. I was like, what? what? <laughs> um, so a gentleman and like his son, they, I guess they were going around and they were with a chainsaw cutting things down and they actually helped us find our way back. So you're um, like, kind of like, we're here in deliverance part two. Oh, yeah. 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 So I was, I was, was it daytime was, or nighttime now? So daytime. This is, daytime. A, this is just after noon, I think. Uh, one, two o'clock in the afternoon, actually. Okay. So you had, a, road, you had an early road, start that morning. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So now you're back on 95. Yeah, and... which I said not to do. <laughs> I want that on record. Okay. That's that what I, I was going to say. But who <laughs> we who were said on, don't do it? I did. I said okay. don't do it. Don't go on. And literally, I'm not even kidding. By that, he was pulling on, and we already saw the traffic stopping, like in front of us. Um, and I was like, I told you we shouldn't have gone. And he's like, Well, we're already here. It's not like you could like with a travel trailer, you can't like can't turn, turn around. around. Oh. So you just gotta go full force into it. And we did, and um, it was the first time I've ever drove, drove a camp, the camper, because, um, you know, it was, we couldn't really do anything or go anywhere, so if we want to take a break or go use the bathroom, I could, you know, at least inch our way up and up and well, up, and that's all I did. You were just <laughs> inching, was there a point where it was just stopped? Yes. Okay. That happens around, um, I was texting my family and friends, because they were like, I see this craziness, and I said, yep. We're we're in it. Yeah, wave. Um, we're here. We're right. Yeah. We're right down there. Or yeah, right. we we were there. That was about um. It was around seven o'clock that night when and we it's just. Dark. Moved. It's dark at seven yeah. at night. Yeah. Okay. And how were the temperatures at the time? Were you worried about freezing up and back? It went oh, down to twenty two. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. And you hadn't winterized yet, right? You hadn't rewinterized. No, no, we hadn't. We actually we had water in the tanks because of where we camped at in North Carolina and Florida. So we did have water in our tanks. We have a toy hauler. It's got large storage tanks. Uh, so we weren't concerned about running out or anything. And then we had planned on either dumping on the way home or, you know, rewinterizing when I got home in the driveway kind of thing. OK, so now um, now you're stopped. Um, were there, there was traffic on both sides of you? Were you in the right lane, left lane? What was the deal as far as? Um, right lane. So there was right and there was still somebody in the middle and then another one in the left. On the left, okay. It was, um, it was still three lanes at that point when did you When did you decide to um, put the kids in? Did you put the kids in back? Yeah, right. You said you the kids in, Danielle, you yeah. went to put the kids in back? Yeah, I did. So they were getting really antsy and that was around like eight o'clock and we really hadn't moved at all at that point. So um, I just, you know, and if it did, it's not like we couldn't just pull them out and bring them back into the, you know, into the truck kind of thing. Yeah. So um, they were back there. I was back there with them for about a good hour. And then I was, you know, we had our phones. I texted him. He goes, we haven't moved. I don't see us moving right now. So just let them sleep. And um, I put them to bed and told them, kiss them goodnight and said, hopefully we'll get out of this and I'll see you soon. But other than that, see you in the morning. Okay. <laughs> um, so. You didn't put out slides or awnings or anything. No, we, we did not. No. Yeah. But Ricky, you you took a picture of the guy behind you that had his slide out, right? Right on the interstate yeah. highway? Yeah, we, we purposely bought a trailer. We didn't have to do that just to access our bathroom. So I think that was a good call on our part. <laughs> yeah, 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 because that was the slide. The slide is out. So... Um, did people knock on your door at all, ask if you need food or if they, if you had any food or water or medicine or anything like that? No, nobody was really out and about. Everybody kind of kept to ourselves in our area. Okay. But trying to make friends, they would just roll up the window. <laughs> <laughs> and then but, we did end up going out the next morning with the kids. They brought some like protein bars, crackers, water, seasoning, if anybody wanted any, like if needed something. Yeah. Um, so, I did, we did have extra blankets, but at that point you don't like, especially also with COVID. I think everybody's just so like huddled together that they don't like huddled to themselves that they don't really want to talk to other people in that aspect. So I think that has a lot to do with it as well. Now, what advice would you have to RVers that are traveling this time of year? Because 
you know, there's a lot of, a lot of our, you said you saw tons of RVs on 95, right? Mm -hmm. Right. And especially right after the first of the year, you get a lot of the Northeastern people that head to Florida. They stay at home, you know, for Christmas and New Year's. What advice would you have to RVers about, um, outside of having a full tank as much as possible and having propane, um, what other things would you say to have in your RV for the trip? That generator. That gener <laughs> generator um, I mean, I had I had food that I could microwave so that we still had like we still had a warm dinner. Like I could actually microwave or do and do things. The generator. I mean, we ran the generator and the propane, so the kids had you know a bed to sleep in and and warmth like when they were in the camper. So that generator really was. We really needed that. Yeah, and that Win Winnebago Spider toy hauler that you have um, held the heat in pretty well, insulated well. Yeah, it's a it's a Four Seasons insulated unit. So, you know, we we plan on camping in the cold weather at some point, <laughs> and that was that was and the first did. time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, nobody had nobody gave birth to a baby in the next car or anything like that, yeah. right? Not that we know of. Not that you know no, of. Okay, nothing, you never know. Crazy. Yeah. I, I helped uh, the guy behind us with the RV. Uh, we had to jumpstart his truck first thing in the morning. So I lent some okay. jumper cables. Uh, I do keep uh, tools and everything so I could change tires. And, and I'm pretty prepared as far as that goes. But with any other cold weather driving situation, bottles of water and a couple snacks kind of thing just to keep in your car. Keep in the car. That's right. Exactly. And well, blankets. And blankets. Blanket. Yeah. Right. Well, we want to I thank mean, you so much. Um, let me ask you this, this final question. Did this solidify your love for RVing or did it put it on edge? <laughs> I think we're going to take a, a nice break for the rest of the winter. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's we still want to travel and, and see the country. So yeah. right. we just we have been lucky enough to see a lot of the, the South or you know, the Northeast coast and the Northeast in general, but now, you know, we still want to go see you out West. So we're not giving up. Great. Hey, we want to thank you so much for taking time. I know that uh, today you were still what went re-winterizing re and getting some of the stuff out of the gear, out of the yeah. uh, trailer, getting the gear out of the trailer and getting back into the house. So we want to thank you so much. And our guests have been the survivors. This should be a new, a new version of survivor. Ricky and Danielle Meyer from Pennsylvania. Thank you so much. And thanks, John. Is our being in New England and part of the Camp Report show. Have a great day, everybody. Jesus. Well, let me bring Carolyn up to say good night. Uh, if I can figure out how Carolyn, to. Carolyn, you stayed with us the whole time. You are so loyal. She was, she was there. I don't know You're how so to get loyal. There. Thank you, Walter Swenson. And um, you know what, folks? I think you saw the value of an owning an RV in that particular case. Those little kids got to sleep in a bed. The parents got to sleep. the The wife slept in back. The husband slept in the car <laughs> that night in the truck, just in case Amazing. they had to move. That was, that was a terrific video, John. Thanks for nice uh, putting that, you know, and he, he did all that. Like we were sending notes back and forth about five minutes before the show. Can we squeeze this in? I got this interview. I got, got to do this. We, we ought to send it out to Winnebago too, after it airs on the uh, camper report show. What are you doing, John? No, Carolyn put a note up. There you go. I was muted, but I think I had to mute, unmute myself. Oh, 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 okay. <laughs> Remember. I wanted to tell you something funny. The, the fact that you got those guys on camera cracked me up because um, I don't know if I ever told you this. I probably did, but I was in San Francisco during the earthquake, the 1989 earthquake, I guess it was, do, doing, the, um, doing a trade show in San Francisco. And I was only a couple years out of college, too, to be specific. And my first impulse was I got to call the UMass Daily Collegian and call in a story. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. I appreciate the spirit of you getting in touch with those people. And I thought that was pretty good. They were, they yeah. were charming. Yeah. Hey, Walter says he slept in his RV in a Delaware rest area just off 95. I probably have done that. But, yeah. um, you know, that's that. Yeah.
like you're saying, the whole thing, folks, is RVing is there's another purpose. Oh, another thing about these people here. We're we're way over time. So any of you guys want to go off and do your thing, go ahead. Yeah. Um, but they were building, they had a fire in their house. Mm-hmm. And it was in uninhabitable. And they had the RV and they lived in the RV for three months. Oh, for sure. Full time wow. during the time that her house was being uh you get, they get the makings of a TV series or a book. <laughs> but how about the wife saying immediately, I told him not to go back on that road. I, She's I, like, I, I want that, that. down for the record. Been, been there, done that many yeah. times. Yeah. <laughs> I'm well, never right. going to listen to you again. Good. Thank you for, uh, Carolyn, well, thanks for joining us tonight. Yeah. And, uh, fans, of course, thank, thank you. you. All thank right, look forward to seeing you in person. Um, well, we'll see you soon. Thanks, Carolyn. Hey. Thanks, everybody. I'm going to hit the closing video, and then I'm going to go refill my glass. <laughs> Have a nice This edition of RVing in New England was a presentation of the New England RV Dealers Association. Thanks for watching, and be sure to like us on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram.